Well, if you live in the Sioux Falls area, you know how important the banquet is to Kelloland. Not only have they been providing meals for people who might have had to go without one, but they also make sure the school children that they don't serve or they serve don't go without school supplies each year. Uh, Madeline Shields is with the banquet, and she's here to tell us about how the banquet will be expanding its West Side services and how you can help their efforts. So, Madeline, great to have you. Thanks for having me. This how, is great. How many meals a day are served at? at uh, how many is it? Just three, four? How many meals a day are you doing? On Tuesdays and Wednesdays each week, we serve three meals each day, and it's two evening meals and one breakfast. Uh, right now, we serve at the banquet at Eighth and Indiana. We yeah. serve breakfast Monday through Friday, and we serve dinner. Um, Monday through Friday and lunch on Saturday. Um, in 2014, we added a meal at the fairgrounds. WH uh, Lion Fairgrounds rents a space in the Nordstrom Johnson building, and we are able to serve people in Northwest Sioux Falls there. There is a critical need in that neighborhood. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. <coughs> so, for the 33 years that this has been around, mm -hmm. How has it evolved from its initial concept to where it is today? Well, exactly. We served one meal a week when the banquet opened in 1985. Oh, wow. And when, that, when the doors opened, as you might expect, no one came because no one believes that someone would give them a meal with no strings attached. And, of course, as we, we promoted the banquet, it is having a meal and inviting in your friends, your family, and treating them as your guest. And that's the premise of the banquet, and that's what we believe today, so that everyone is welcome to come and have a meal at the banquet And there's table. no strings attached? No strings attached. No questions asked. You come in, and uh, the only statistic we keep at the banquet is we count how many meals we serve. And that's be for food planning. Sure. We need to know if we serve... Um, 580 people on Tuesday night. Well, we better plan for 600 on Wednesday night because we're we don't know how many people are going to show up. Such an important piece for our community and and businesses, uh, groups, individuals have played a big part in that with the volunteering and and helping make make it successful. Yes, we have about 25,000 volunteers that come through our doors every year to serve the meals at the banquet. Uh, we are blessed to have that many volunteers, but we never have enough, obviously. Uh, just last week, because of the 4th of July holiday, we had five meals that went unsponsored. We did not have a group for five separate meals. And so that really hurts the bottom line at the banquet. Because when we recruit businesses or church groups or youth groups or families to come and serve the meal, they, we ask them to pay for the meal, cook the meal, and serve the meal. And so when we don't have a sponsor for that meal, then the banquet has to come up with that food what, cost. What's the cost? I mean, if you wanted to sponsor sure. one meal. Uh, for breakfast, it's about 300 to 350 um, per meal. And, you know, what's amazing about that is we serve for $2.50 a tray. That's about our average price. Right. So it's a bargain. When you look at those big numbers, you think, um, wow, you can eat roast beef, mashed potatoes and gravy, um, a vegetable, a salad, a piece of bread, milk, coffee, all for $2.50. You can't get that anywhere in this town. And it's homemade, everyday, fresh. It's delicious food. Um, our evening meals, it's about $750 for an evening meal, which if we're serving 500 to 600 people at mm -hmm. night, that's a bargain. So if people or groups wanted to get involved, mm -hmm. and so how, do, uh, how does it happen? Do they just contact you? They can go right online at thebanquetsf.org, and they click on to serve or sponsor a meal. And we have a calendar there. And on that calendar, it shows all the dates that are open. They can go on in and manually uh, enter their business, and then they will get uh, a confirmation from our volunteer recruitment coordinator. She will get a hold of them, and she will visit with them, and she'll give them all the guidelines on what it takes to serve a meal. So you've got another project that you do. It's actually called Project SOS that's outside of the, the meal part of it. So tell us about that. Yeah, Project SOS is Supply Our Students. And that started in about 1989, very unorganized. We had a mom sitting in the dining room eating with her children, and she started to sob. And uh, the director at the time said, what's, what's the 
the matter? She said, if I can't feed my children, how am I ever going to get them ready for, sc mm -hmm. for school? Mm -hmm. And it's very expensive. And that was way back then. And so what happened is it, it has evolved. What started as uh, soliciting to the groups to buy um, a crayon or marker and sure. bring it to the banquet, now we provide 6,000 brand new backpacks filled with school supplies to children in Sioux Falls and all the surrounding school districts. Wow. Everything at the banquet is donated. And I think a lot of people are um, surprised when they hear that. The banquet receives no city, county, state, federal, or United Way funds. Everything at the banquet for all its projects, all its, all its food, everything is 100% private donations. So when people say, uh, I only have twenty dollars to give. How much could that? That's not going to yeah, help. It, it helps. Five dollars helps. Yeah. Because if you if you donate five dollars to the banquet, you just fed two people dinner. Let's. We've got a minute to go okay. here, and I want to talk about your expansion because you've yes. been at the fairgrounds, but mm -hmm. you want to move west. Sure. Tell we, us about that. We need to move west of Interstate 29. Um, there is a massive uh, neighborhood. At North Marion Road where there are families that cannot get to our facility at 8th and Indiana and we are blessed to have received two acres of land donated by the Delbridge family right at the corner of 5th Street and Marion Road so if you're on West 12th Street you take a right and go north on Marion go up to 5th and Marion and we will have a building right on that corner that will serve uh, the whole Hayward neighborhood as well as George McGovern Middle School neighborhood, those children in that area are about 77 to 80 percent free and reduced lunches. So we know we need to be there. We launched a 1.6 million dollar capital campaign and we need all the help we can get to reach that goal. When do you plan on, hopefully, if it goes well, when do you hope to open? We hope to open um, in early to mid 2019 um, and we are making our, our final push to collect this 1.6 yeah. million and like I said every every dollar helps. Good luck with that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, neat stuff. Thanks for coming in and sharing everything with us. Sure. So, yeah, Thank thanks you. Madeline.